here with the Siren and the Pirate, Jewelry for the Adventure, and today I'm teaching you, well, I'm actually going to just go through some troubleshooting um, and some tips and tricks for how to do a spiral. Just from working with my students and also from my own past experience, I know that spirals can be a little a little tough for beginners so I want to show you some basic techniques just to kind of get you moving in this actually when I sat down to make this video I started thinking what am I going to include and I thought of a whole bunch of things that I could talk about with spirals so today's video I'm just going to give you a basic lesson uh, to get you you know pick up that wire try it out and hopefully you're successful with that and then I'll save um, some other information for another video. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, two types of spirals. Um, this is a closed spiral and this is an open spiral. So the closed spiral, you can see the wires um, as they go out, the spiral are on top of one another, touching, so it's completely closed. And this one, they are spaced apart. So open spiral, closed spiral. It does not matter what type of spiral you do right now, you just kind of want to get it going and doesn't matter if it's partially closed, partially open, um, just getting the basic uh, movement down is what's going to be important for today. So if you could just grab a little piece of practice wire. I'm using 20 gauge wire to start. Um, obviously you can use all sizes of gauges. I think 20 gauge might be easier for you to start with as a beginner. And make sure the end, see right now the end is pointy because it was trimmed with this side of the cutters. So I'm going to use the flush side just to give it a little trim and that is going to give it a nice clean whoosh, off the top. Alright, now you're going to use your round nose pliers and you're going to pinch the very tip of that wire, the head of the pliers, and we're going to get the middle of the spiral, or think of it as like the middle of the cinnamon bun. We're going to start to rotate, so I'm using mainly just my wrist right now, and I'm getting that rotating, rotating, rotating. I can actually take that close to the other side, and then I'm going to release. Releasing is very important here. I'm going to release, I'm going to move the outer head of the pliers here. So you notice the middle, or the, this plier head stayed in the middle, but I relocated the outside head just a little. And so that's going to give me leverage because look how far my wrist is twisted here. I can't really go any further, so I'm going to have to release and grab somewhere else on the wire, okay? Now I've got more leverage for wrist rotation, but here's the thing, and this is the first um, troubleshooting tip I wanna give. Your wire has probably ended up looking like this at some point or the other. If you're laughing, it's because it's true. <laughs> so I see this piggy tail action that comes, and that happens because we grab, we might even relocate, but then we're just using wrist motion and we're just focusing on that middle of the cinnamon bun the whole time. We're not focusing on getting larger with our spirals, so we end up just doing this. I'm spiraling, I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling, I'm spiraling, I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling. I'm spiraling. Now, we all know the best part of the cinnamon roll is the middle but not in this case. We don't want a bunch of middles. We want more of the spiral, the outer portion of the cinnamon bun. So this is how we fix that. So this is the technique that I think um, most of my beginner students have had the most success with. So we get that middle going and we'll talk later on about making a really tight center or a more open one right now just um, create whatever size you want. Okay, so once you get the middle of the cinnamon bun done, now I want you to grab a pair of either um, chain nose, those are just the regular looking pliers, I don't have a pair with me right now, so I'm just going to use these flat pliers, which is fine too, 
And we're now gonna grab the middle of our cinnamon bun flat like a pancake. I've got a lot of food analogies. All right, so we're gonna grab it flat. Now, when you grab it with the pliers, I don't want you to use the tip. There's not as much um, force, and it's probably gonna easily slip around in the, the tip of the pliers. So we're gonna hold it down here where there's more compressing force. This will probably flatten your wire a little bit, um, but that's okay. So we're gonna grab here, and then we're gonna use our other hand to bend the wire around the spiral. We'll probably just kinda go for an open spiral here. You'll notice I'm just going a little at a time. Might need to even do this little at a time, just inching your way along. Dot, dot, dot. And what you'll notice is that I'm not using the pliers really to do the spiraling because the more movement I have with this hand, the more chances I have of scratching. So I've already made some little dents just because my pliers are a little rough and I need to smooth them out probably with the file. So it's causing some little dents. I'm okay with that right now. Again, we're just getting the, the movement going so we're not gonna really fine-tune this. I just want you to grab the middle and just start to rotate it around. So you should end up with something similar to this. So if you're not using the little um, flat like a pancake technique, chances are you're still using the round nose pliers to continue spiraling and you may end up having little bends all over in your wire, which if that is the design you're going for would be cool, but if you're going for a nice smooth spiral and it ends up looking like this, you're gonna be pretty disappointed with that. So let me tell you why this happens. So you might've done everything correctly, getting the middle of the spiral going, but then what happens is you go, okay, um, I've gotta get the whole thing to start to bend, so I can't keep it here because I'll end up doing a little piggy tail, so I'll move my pliers here. Okay, great, awesome, because now I need the rest of this to bend, so we bend it. Oh, and then I gotta relocate, so I'll grab maybe here, and I'll bend, and I'll grab, and I'll, <laughs> I'll bend, and I'll bend. This is a really fancy looking spiral. So you might end up with something that's like, what the heck happened there? So we can't use the round nose pliers on a smooth curve because wherever those pliers are located, that's gonna create a, bend, a sharper bend in the wire. So you don't wanna end up using, using it that way. So if you're not wanting to do the little pancake technique, I'm quitting it, and you just want to use your round nose pliers to create that spiral, but you don't want all of the uh, bends, sharp bends in the wire, again, you're gonna get it started just like we talked about before. Relocate. And now the trick here is that we can't make that piggy tail, right? So we have to get the this part of the wire to start to bend and not just think of rotating from the center because we all know what happened last time. So now I have to start thinking this has to smoothly start to curve. So while I'm rotating my wrist, I'm also getting this part of the wire to bend, maybe guiding it with my other hand. And I'm rolling in, but not at um, the degree I was before. I'm getting the rest of the wire to start to bend, 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 coming around, and then release. Okay, now if I am going to continue doing that open spiral, this technique is going to work. With the closed spiral, you're not going to have anything to grip onto, but I can keep my grip 
on that center and continue to roll the spiral around. So I'm curving the rest of the wire around it and just using um, the center as a holding spot. Hope that makes sense. That one, I've tried to teach it that way before. <laughs> Maybe I'm not very good at teaching that one. Um, but most people right away don't really grasp on to that one. Uh, definitely the, the pancake method is the winner for most of the time. So now let's use the same methods and instead of creating an open spiral, we'll do a closed spiral. And I'm still gonna leave the center um, quite open right now. Um, I'll talk about a technique where you can really squish the center and so you don't even see um, through the center. It's completely closed up. But for right now, let's just get um, an easy semi-open center going. So we're gonna bring it around so it's almost touching the other side. Now, you can use the same method as before. You're gonna grip and bring that wire around. You just wanna make sure that as you come around, and a lot of times I go in if it's um, getting a little wonky and close that up a little bit more. So just use your pliers, squeeze it closed. It got a perfect little circle going on now. But I'm just gonna make the spiral tighter so that each wire is touching the other wire. Okay, so same method as before, nothing to it. Just hold and then use your other wire to bring it, or sorry, use your other hand to move the wire around the center so you get that spiral going. Um, and oh, this is actually another nice tip that I've used. Where did I get this from? I've got, I got this from somebody else, um, but it's, it works really, really well. So advice here is to get your center going, relocate, and then take the um, very tip of the wire just underneath the next side of the circle or the spiral. Then the magic is you have something to hold on to like so and then you can continue doing a closed spiral. The benefit of this is that you're not gonna risk marring your wire scratching it or flattening the wire because you can just guide it around like that and then whatever is sticking out there you can either go in and trim it off or you can just go in and squish it down and that's what you end up with um, I love that tip so that's another good one to keep in the old toolbox. Spirals can be useful for so many different things, in, in especially with wire work. So if you're not getting the basic spiral, I understand how frustrating it can be. And it's really gonna limit you um, because you know, you're not going to want to incorporate a spiral into your piece or make a head pin or this um, because you're not, you're not confident in doing it. So I hope that this helps kind of take some of the, um, you know, the anxiety out of making spirals. Um, just sit down, practice them, grab a few pieces of scrap wire and practice these techniques because once, once you get it, you got it. I mean, there's, they're so simple to do once you figure it out and you'll want to incorporate them into so many different things. So I hope this was helpful. If you have more questions, um, I'll probably do another video in the future, uh, maybe on some 
you know, design techniques or how to use spirals or, you know, whatever, uh, send me your questions and thank you so much for watching.